Imagine that with just a few clicks, your regular reports are done in seconds. I'll show you how to use Excel macros to automate your reporting. It's easier than you might expect, and you'll learn how to turn this into this. If you're an analyst, you will probably have new data like this and need to create a report from it. Here we're working with data on electric car sales organized by country. Every month, we get a new set of numbers, and we need to turn that data into a well-formatted report to send to managers. The data always comes in the same format, so we can use our macros to automate your report. Let's tackle this in four steps. And you'll want to stick around to the last step because I'm going to show you a little known hack that can save you even more time. Step one. There's a really important menu that we need to reveal, so it's not shown up here in the ribbon. Let's right click and then customize the ribbon. On the right, you'll see that there's a line that says developer. You've got to check that and click OK. This means we now have access to all these developer tools. Now, don't be too scared. I'll show you how to use the ones we need. Let's record our first macro. Click on this button, which says record macro. And this will pop up. We're going to give it a name first. So I'll choose step underscore one. Notice we can't use spaces in macro names. So I'm going to use this underscore instead of a space. And then another underscore header. Then just make sure to store the macro in this workbook. You can drop down to select different options. But we'll go with this workbook and click OK. Now Excel is recording everything we do. So take your time when you do this. You want to make sure that everything you click on or type is what you want to record. So the first thing I'm going to do is right click on column two and insert to add an extra column as a spacing. Then I'm going to select row one and I'll head to home. I'm going to select bottom border, then click on bold to make the text bold. Now I'll change the fill color to a light gray like this. And then I'll change the font from Aptos Narrow all the way down to Aptos Black. And we'll increase this to size 20. So that's starting to look a bit better. Now what I want to do is add a little bit of extra space on the left. So I'll right click on column A and click on Insert. Then I'll right click again on column A and click on Column Width. So I'll reduce the column width to 1.5 and click OK. Now I'll select A1 and change the fill color to this blue. And there's one more thing we want to do. I want to change this text so it says month one car sales, but I don't want to actually type in month one car sales because when month two comes around or month three comes around, I don't want it to say month one car sales. So we're going to go into cell E1 and type in the formula equals and then click on B1 type in an ampersand, quote marks, space, car, space, sales, space, open bracket, USD, close bracket, quote marks. Then I'll press Control and Enter to stay in the same cell. Now I want to copy this, so I'll Control C to copy and click on B1. I'll press Control Alt V to paste and I want to paste as values. Then I click OK. So now that's pasted this as values, we can go back to cell E1 and press delete. Then the last thing to do, select A1, go to the developer tab and click on stop recording. Let's test the macro on month two data. Click on macros. You see step one header, We've got that selected, then click on run. And it updates month two car sales. So the header is ready. Now, before you do anything else, Make sure we go to File and Save As, because we want to make sure we don't save this as a normal Excel workbook. We've got to save it as an Excel macro enabled workbook.xlsm file, and then click Save. And the reason we do that is because we want to make sure all the macros that we record will be saved. If we save it as an Excel only file, we'll lose all our recorded macros. And we don't want that, do we? Step two. Let's record our second macro to make this table easy to read. So I'm going to click on record macro and then choose a name, step underscore two underscore table, and then click OK. Now I'll click on the top left cell and hold control shift right arrow. And the reason I do that is because I want to have a dynamic range selected. Then I go to home, press bold, 
change the background color to this light blue and give outside borders. Now I'll hold Ctrl and Shift and press down arrow and apply outside borders again. Then I'll go to cell D4, press Ctrl, Shift, right arrow and Ctrl, Shift, down arrow to select all the numbers. And we're going to format them with a comma style and reduce the number of decimals. Then we'll head back up to target and actual, select those and right align them, increase the indent so they line up with the numbers. Select columns C and B and increase the width to 14 and select cell A1. Now there's one last thing I'll do, which is go to view and I'll turn off grid lines and then go to developer and click stop recording. Let's test this on month two. So we'll click on macros, then select step two and then click run. And there we go. So the table macro is done. Now it's time to add our first chart. Step three, our third macro is gonna add a column chart this will show target versus actual numbers so we can compare our planned sales against actual performance. Let's click on record macro, give it a name, step underscore three underscore column chart, click OK. Now click on the top left cell and press Ctrl A to select all the range. Go to insert and we'll click on a combo chart and select the first one. Now we'll change the chart type so that the target series is a line with markers and we'll change the actual series to a clustered column and then click OK. Now let's get rid of the chart title, delete that and click on the actual series. Now press Ctrl 1 to bring up the format data series dialog box. Click on the fill icon and let's change that to a light blue. So click this light blue and scroll down we don't align, so we'll get rid of the border. Now we'll click on the target series. And up here, we'll get rid of the line. Then we'll change it to a marker. And with the marker options, we want to select a built-in marker. And the type is going to be this horizontal line. And I'll select a size of 20. Now we'll scroll down again and again click on no line. So let's close the dialog box and press Control X to cut that chart because we want to paste it in G3. So I'll select G3 and then Control V to paste it. And finally, we'll right click on column F and change the column width to 1.5 and click on OK. Now, click on cell A1 and go back to the developer tab. And remember, we've got to stop recording. So click on that. Let's test our macro on month two. So we'll click on macros and then select step three, the column chart, and we'll click on run. But look at this time, it says there's a runtime error. The item with the specified name wasn't found. Let's click on debug to find out what's going on. So this is called the VB editor. Don't worry that it's full of code. The only thing you need to concentrate on is this yellow line. So you'll see it's got this word active sheet. Now that refers to the sheet we're on. And so the active sheet dot chart objects, chart three, it's trying to activate this object called chart3. But there is no object on this called chart3. This one would be called chart1 because it's on a new sheet. So it can't find chart3. In this case, all we have to do is select that line or that text there and press backspace. Now we can head up and continue running the macro with this green button. And then we can switch back to Excel and press Alt and F11. That switches back to Excel and we see it's run properly. But we'll test this on month three to see if it really has worked. So click on macros. We'll run step one. That's on the header. We'll run step two. That's on the table. And now we'll try step three. And that's on the chart. If you've been following along so far, you might have wondered how I knew to remove that single line of code to make the macro work. Many years ago, I learned how to write and edit macros using Excel's VBA language, and it took me a long time, plus it was pretty challenging. But the good news for you is that I figured out how to teach this skill so that you can learn it in weeks and not years. I've created an online course that's helped over 500 students master Excel macros and VBA. If you want to find out more, check the link in the description below. 
Now back to our report macros because we're not done just yet. If you want to be a true macro master, you've got to be able to run your macros quickly. Step four. To set this up, we'll click on macros. Then where it says step one header, we'll click on options. And it gives us the option to assign a shortcut key. So we could use say A or B, but control A and control B are already reserved. So control A to select all, control B to bold. Instead of that, we're going to use control shift Q. So I'll type in shift and Q to assign that as a shortcut combo. Now that's not assigned to anything else in Excel, so that's going to be okay. Do the same for step two. We'll click on options and we'll use shift W. So the shortcut combo is control shift and W, but I only had to enter shift and W to make that happen. So now we click okay. We'll do the same for step three, click on options and press shift E and then click okay. Now we'll close the dialog box and test this on report four. So this hasn't had any of the macros run on it. And instead of going to the macros dialog box, we can simply press control shift Q for the header, control shift W for the table and control shift E for the chart. How do we know which letters are available and which ones you need to avoid? To help you remember, I've come up with this mnemonic, float up. Just avoid any of the letters in float up, F L O A T U P. Use any other letter and you should be good to go. So all of the green letters on this keyboard are good to use. Now I've included this in the free workbook that you can download from the link below. Recorded macros are great for automating simple tasks, but we just scratched the surface of what you can do with them. To really unlock Excel's potential, you need to know VBA, which stands for Visual Basic for Applications. There's so much more that you can do once you know VBA, and with my help, it's very easy to learn. If you're new to macros and VBA, here's a video to quickly get you started. And if you want to see the power of VBA, check out this video. Finally, if you hate wasting time on repetitive Excel tasks and you're ready to master Excel macros and VBA to automate Excel, check out the link in the description below.